What's up, Average Dad fans? Welcome back to another video. And yes, it's the moment you've been waiting for. It's the full review of the Vivo X Fold 3 Pro. Now, I know what you're thinking. You've just reviewed the Vivo X Fold 3. Is there really much difference? Well, I can tell you without giving away spoilers that every single category in my five category point scoring system has a different score for the Vivo X Fold 3 Pro compared to the Vivo X Fold 3. Let's go. So for those new to the channel, I am The Average Dad and I review tech, typically from the Asian market filled with a Chinese ROM that needs some workarounds, but offer absolute bang for buck. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, please smash subscribe and enjoy this video. Now my full reviews, as always, have five categories. Build quality, design, software, cameras and price. Now, within those categories, I will go off piste a little bit. For example, none of these really encapsulate performance or battery life. So I will include my experience as we go along. Each category has five points available. So without further ado, let's start with build quality. Straight away, when you take this phone out of the box, it just feels premium. The aluminium frame, the 236 grams of weight, while premium feeling for a foldable device, that's actually the second lightest available, only beat by its younger sibling, the X Fold 3. Now, Vivo's own proprietary armor glass is meant to be better than Gorilla Glass. I've not tested that out. However, it comes with a pre-installed screen protector. And for the rear protection, you have an included vegan leather type feeling case with hinge protection. I absolutely recommend you slap that case on as soon as you take the phone out of the box because we're talking about an expensive piece of kit. Now, other aspects of the build quality, obviously a folding phone, you want to have a decent hinge. Well, this hinge has been tested a million times, apparently, and it's carbon fiber. I have heard no reports of any issues with the hinge when it comes to the Vivo X Fold 3. And in my experience, it's been fantastic. No creaks, no cracks. And at 45 degrees, 90 degrees, 135 degrees, it feels solid. Anybody that watched my previous or one of my previous videos on the flex mode feature, you'll know that the hinge is sturdy enough to use this in flex mode in all apps. The final aspect of build quality, much like the X Fold 3, there is ingress protection. However, the X Fold 3 Pro has IPX8 water resistance, meaning if you were brave enough, you could drop this in a swimming pool leave it there for about 30 minutes and it would still be okay. I will not be doing that. However, here it is getting run under a nice cold tap. So build quality wise, because it's one of the only foldable devices with water resistance, not just splash resistance, I'm giving this a four out of five. The phone just feels fantastic in the hand and, well, look at it. Taking us nicely on to design where it's all about the looks. The most subjective category in all of my reviews is design. And for the next couple of minutes, I'm only going to talk about my opinions in the design. The facts that we can talk about, though, are the dimensions. An 11.2 millimeter folded smartphone means that this falls round about third or fourth as far as the world's thinnest foldable device. 5.4 millimeters unfolded. Again, super impressive when we come to talk about everything that's included in this device, from battery to camera, chipsets, all that good stuff that we will talk about. So keep those dimensions in your mind. And also keep in mind that it's competition out with its own younger sister in the X Fold 3 is the OnePlus Open at 12 point something millimeters folded, the Google Pixel Fold at 12 point something, and the Samsung Z Fold 5 at 
12 point something folded. All of which have smaller batteries and older chipsets. Keep that in mind. Now, finishing off the design aspect that is purely based on my opinion, it's the overall look. The rear camera bump, that circular rear camera bump on the rear, I think looks great, while slightly off-center to mess with people's OCD. The white color with that marble effect is stunning, but please put the included case on the device. Protect that nice shiny silver hinge as well. So for those that don't remember, the X-Fold 3 I gave 4 out of 5 for design. However, I personally think what Vivo have managed to do with the X-Fold 3, making it the lightest foldable phone on the planet, making it 10.2 millimeters folded, that deserved an extra half point. So in design category, I actually gave the X-Fold 3 a 4, which means I have to downgrade the X-Fold 3 Pro to a 3.5 out of 5. Now moving on to the software category. And in the software category, this is where I'll talk about the internals, the performance, and the battery. Not just the battery capacity, but the actual real-life battery I am getting in my two weeks of using it. So let's get the software out of the way first. It's Android 14 inside with Origin OS skin, which trust me is one of the silver linings from a Chinese ROM device. Yes, it's a Chinese ROM, not global. We'll get to that in a second. But Origin OS is the skin that is used in China. Fun Touch OS is a skin that's used in the global market. Origin OS kicks Fun Touch's arse. From the Origin OS kits, to the customization, to the themes, to the ease of use, to the Jovi Connect with wireless car and all that stuff that you can do if you have a compatible car, which I don't sadly, but there is lots you can do. And the OTG display out. This phone has everything you could want software wise and feature wise all in a really nicely presented skin. It doesn't look unpolished like Magic OS from Honor, which looks a bit childlike. This just, every corner of the software experience is polished. And then we move on to the internals I discussed. The X-Fold 3 Pro is the first large format foldable phone to be given the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chip. Making it, by default, the world's most powerful foldable phone. No denying it. Also, yes, I know that others will be released this year, but the X-Fold 3 Pro is the first. The Adreno 750 GPU is just a beast. All Snapdragon chips, to be honest, from the 8 Gen 1, heck, even the AAA, are just beasts. I much prefer their efficiency, their performance and speeds against the Apple Silicon chip every day of the week. And then when we talk about efficiency, the big one that we have to discuss is battery life. Well, when you pair the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chip with the world's largest... There's a theme here. The world's largest battery inside a foldable device. Yes, 5,700 milliamp hour battery. That's nigh on gaming phone size. So yeah, pair those two together. I am consistently, in fact, I have never not, in the two weeks of using it, got less than two full days of battery from this device. This has my SIM card in it. It has had the SIM card in it from day one. It has 5G roaming on. It has 120 hertz locked. It's full screen resolution. It's my daily driving phone for work, media, play, everything. And I cannot kill it in two days. And to be perfectly honest, if you are killing it in two days, you need to maybe get out more, all due respect. 
So while software and internals round for the X Fold 3 standard was a 3 out of 5, the fact that the X Fold 3 Pro has the latest and greatest Snapdragon chip, it also has Honor's own proprietary V2 chip. And I'll talk about that more when it comes to the next round cameras, but ultimately this is a second system chip that gives efficiency and processing to the photos and videos that you're going to produce, enhancing the images. So for that reason, the X Fold 3 Pro, for me, it gets 4.5 out of 5 for software and internals. So if you're not keeping track, so far the X Fold 3 Pro has 12 out of 15 points. At this stage with the younger sibling, it was on 10.5 out of 15 points. But there's two rounds left and it could all change. The next round is cameras. Now this goes without saying, and I feel I should clarify this again. I am by no means paid by Vivo or any company to deliver my opinions and reviews. This phone has not been given to me by Vivo. I just want to caveat that because what I'm about to say about the camera is going to sound biased. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. Vivo have consistently, since I started using Vivos, which I believe was the original X Fold and the X80 was my first candy bar phone from Vivo, I have been blown away by the photography of these devices. And as the iterations have gone on, the video has caught up with the photos, making it, in my opinion, definitely the best photos and videos from any Android device, and even potentially better photos than iOS. iOS, Apple still have, you know, maybe better video, but Vivo's right there behind them. And the X Fold 3 Pro is just an exhibition of what a flagship camera system can do. It's a triple camera setup with that 50 megapixel main and the 50 megapixel ultra wide, but the 64 megapixel three times optical telephoto, for me, you know I love a zoom lens, that's kind of where the magic happens. Now, I'm showing you examples of photos and videos taken from the X Fold 3, but I want to focus on the three times optical zoom. The three times optical goes to 10 times lossless, but past that, up to 50 times, up to 70, 80, 100 times. Look at the clarity and detail on this street sign or on this sign here. This is all from a three times optical zoom lens. And that, folks, is where that separate V2 chip I was talking about absolutely comes in clutch. It is doing some absolute tomfoolery and magic to produce photos as sharp and clear as this. And Vivo deserve all the praise in the world for that. I have rarely got a blurry out of focus or unusable shot from this phone. And folks, keep in mind, this isn't the most flagship setup Vivo do. The Vivo X100 Pro has a slightly better camera system with a 4.2 times optical zoom lens, but it doesn't have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. And I ultimately think that's what's holding it back from being one of the best flagship phones out there. So hopefully the X100 Ultra will have everything it needs to to be the best because Vivo can and do clearly produce fantastic photos and videos. So I'm not going to take too much longer talking about this. I will do a full camera test in comparison with the Vivo X Fold 3 and the X Fold 3 Pro. But my experience, and that's what this review is, this is based on my experience, this is the best camera system on any foldable device. 
The only thing that comes close, and to be fair, might pip it in some categories sometimes, is the Huawei Mate X5. And if you want to see that comparison, you better hit subscribe because I have a one terabyte collector's edition winging its way to me. So as you can tell, the X Fold 3 Pro is going to score high in cameras, but there's always that caveat. My scoring system is based on all phones. It's not a separate foldable scoring system. But for those that are asking for a separate foldable system, just look at the overall scores for the foldable devices and do your own comparison. You don't need an, an extra table or other videos for it. What I do is I compare all phones. And right now, the best camera phones out there are the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, the Oppo Find X7 Ultra, and the Samsung S24 Ultra. They all scored 4.5 out of 5. So I can't give this 4.5 out of 5 because it's not quite up there yet. If it was a quad lens, if I had an extra periscope zoom lens, then probably. But I am going to give it 4 out of 5 for cameras. And now we move on to the final category, which is price. And of all the categories, this is the weakest area for the X Fold 3 Pro with another caveat. I know, I love a caveat. And for context, we're at 16 out of 20. So all this device needs is three points to be the number one foldable phone on my list. And I ain't going to keep you hanging on. It actually scores... 3.5 out of 5, bringing the total for the X Fold 3 Pro to 19.5 out of 25, making it the number one foldable device. And pipping its younger sibling in second place with 18.5 by one point. So yes, the top two foldables in my list, beating the OnePlus Open, the May X5, the Google Pixel Fold, or the Vivo X Fold 3 in second, and the X Fold 3 Pro in first. Now, just to explain why it's getting 3.5 for price, and the X Fold 3 got 5 out of 5 for price. The X Fold 3 is under £1,000. It's the cheapest foldable phone on the planet, brand new, and it's one of the best. That's simple. Why this dropped a point and a half is because this is £350 more expensive than the X Fold 3. And while every single category on this device that we've just talked about is slightly better, I'm not sure I can recommend to you as buyers that £350 is necessarily worth it. But that's only because the X Fold 3 is so damn good with camera design, all that stuff. The reason it does score quite well, though, is because its competition, in my opinion, the X Fold 3 Pro's competition is your more expensive foldable phones. Your £1,700 foldable phones from Honor, OnePlus and Samsung. So when you compare their retail price to the X Fold 3 Pro, the X Fold becomes a bargain. It's 300 or 350 pounds cheaper than the Samsung OnePlus and Google Pixel. So that's why it got 3.5 and all those other ones got three. For me, Vivo have absolutely nailed it with the X Fold 3 series. I've already thanked Vivo in a video and I just want to say it again, thank you. Thank you for consistently pushing the competition. And that goes out to Honor as well. They are pushing people to do better. Do you honestly think that the Honor V2 has not influenced Vivo to try and make the world's thinnest phone? Of course it has. Do you honestly think that the OnePlus Open hasn't 
absolutely driven Samsung to try and do better with the Z Fold 6, potentially Z Fold 6 Ultra. Of course it has. We need this competition. And yes, I've done a million videos about a Chinese ROM versus a global ROM, so I'm not going to go into that actually at all right now. I've got enough videos down in my channel that you can check out on the Chinese ROM and how that works. But the more that we buy, and just as a little update, through my Wanda link, by the way, you can get the X-Fold 3 and the X-Fold 3 Pro. Cheapest you'll find it is on Wanda, most likely, and it'll be with you within three or four days if you order today. You can buy that, link in description, I get 10 bucks for every sale, and if you pay by bank transfer, you'll get 3.8% off, which is about £60 off the X-Fold 3 Pro. But the reason I bring up that is because I can check my dashboard and I can see that through my link in the past three weeks, I have already sold 50 X-Fold 3s or X-Fold 3 Pros. And that's just through my link, through my small little tech channel. If we can keep these sales going, and that this sounds like I'm trying to sell it. It's not. All I'm trying to make the point is, the more that Vivo sell in the European US market through Wanda, the more likely we are to get a global release. That's not me trying to guilt you into buying. Please, please do your research. Make sure it's the right phone for you. But I am hopeful that global releases for large format foldable phones are going to come sooner rather than later. Now, as always, if you've got any questions at all about the device before you're going to buy leave me a message in the comments or message me on instagram and if i have answered any questions and you've found them super helpful or if my setup videos have helped you get your phone working perfectly you can buy me a beer link in description and until next time when i will be comparing the x fold 3 with the x fold 3 pro Take care.